Ladakh. I've always felt so blessed to be born in this land. I've seen most parts of Ladakh, but this time I had the rare opportunity to be on a journey that took me across high passes, treacherous roads, narrow gorges, wide open valleys to the Tibetan plateau, the roof of the world with big flat plains and mesmerizingly beautiful lakes. I was in these places to meet and interact with our brave soldiers defending the nation. Together with the military engineers, our institute is building carbon neutral solar heated shelters for the Indian Army, which will keep our Jawans warm without burning any fossil fuels. In fact, I think Indian Army is one of the greenest armies in the world, fastest adopter of green technologies. So join me in my journey, journey to the roof of the world. My long journey from southern tip of the country to the northernmost tip started in Chennai. It's 4.15 in the early morning and I'm leaving the IIT Madras campus for the airport. I was here to interact with professors and entrepreneurs about 3D printing of houses. Now in Ladakh at the borders, we would like to 3D print solar heated mud houses and that's what I was exploring to see if we can do it for the Indian Army on the border in extreme climate. Okay, now I'm at the Chennai airport, taking off from one of the southernmost airports in India and reaching the northernmost military airfield. This is also time to say goodbye to the warm weather and summer clothing of uh, Chennai. I'll be soon saying hello to my polar dress in Ladakh. Hi Ladakh, Lay Airport after just five hours of my taking off from Chennai Airport and now on to Dolatbek Uldi, the extreme border of our country. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Julie. Julie, Julie, Julie. This is Gitanjali, my partner in life and work. She's been with me through the thick and thin ups and downs of life. And thank you for the jacket. <laughs> Will be very useful in today's journey. And now let me introduce another important member of our team who supports us through the thick and thin ups and downs, especially of today's trip, our Jimny who will take us through all the treacherous roads today. And now, before we start for the borders, we'll go pick up some goods and some camping gear from my school. Thank you. Yeah, Julie, Ivan Tong. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Julie. Yeah, what you got? Yeah, dig, dig, dig. Yeah, Julie. Yeah, Julie. Young Matan, I'm sick, Gavin. Yeah, Julie. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah. 
And now we have reached the village of Chemde after an hour's drive from Leh Airport. We'll soon be starting our climb towards the Changla Pass, which is one of the highest passes in the world. And it's a very rough road, but not like what we'll encounter when we reach closer to DBO Uli. Ah, it's now Changla Pass at 17,000, nearly 600 feet. It's one of the highest passes in the world, but this is not the only one. Miles to go before I sleep. There are more passes on the way to DBO. Okay. And a good thought, whatever you feel. Oh, uh, no, at this height, thoughts don't work. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here we are after Changla with the yak herds and here my student Thile Nurbu is uh, one of the main yak herders here. He's an expert in cheese making and takes care of how many yaks? We have almost uh, 70 yaks. 70 yaks. These are perhaps the last remaining yaks as young people take other professions. And it's wonderful to be with little baby yaks here. It's time for them to go grazing. They've been just milked. We are told that the road ahead is being repaired and it may take few hours. And since we cannot get too late, I am going to take a shortcut. It's a difficult one, but with the Jimny, I think we can afford the risk. It will be a true test of Jimny's never give up spirit, a test of its ground clearance and its four wheel drive. Let's see how it goes. After crossing the narrow and deep gorges of Chayok Valley, we entered the wide open valley of Galvan area, where 20 of our brave soldiers laid down their lives in 2020. We paid our homage to their memorial and went on to pay our respect to this feat of military engineering. And this is a wonderful strategic bridge on the DSDBO road with uh, 1400 feet length at 14,650 feet altitude. We'll go further to DBO now. This is Mandir Mohr stretch, a particularly treacherous stretch uh, where the sign says use four-wheel drive and only then go ahead. This is what 
the Jimny is known for, but you know what? I'm going to try without four-wheel drive. Something in me tells me that this car will do it without. Let's see. And we made it without even using four-wheel drive where four-wheel drive was strongly recommended. This is thanks to partly the power of the car and partly skills of the driver. And also the encouragement and inspiration of the side seat driver. Oh, truly, truly so. Okay. And here's a welcome surprise break, a beautiful little spring, the waters from those beautiful glaciers, pure spring water and very refreshing. Mm. Pure, real mineral water, the rest is all fake. And absolutely delicious too. And now on to the wide open plains of Tepsang Bulge, some 40 kilometers long and 20 kilometers wide at 17,400 feet altitude. It's amazing driving alongside the majestic glaciers of the Trans Himalayas that feed much of the Indian subcontinent. And finally, after 365 kilometers from Leh, we are about to reach our destination, Dolat Big Oldi. We'll see our solar passive shelters there, which will keep our soldiers warm in polar punishing winters of extreme Ladakhi conditions. It's been an amazing journey, starting from Chennai Airport, one of the southernmost airfields in India, to DBO Oldi, one of the extreme northernmost airfields. Well, we'll see how it goes now with the supervision and interaction with our friends from the army about solar heated shelters that are carbon neutral, zero energy, and a great gift for nature. We believe our work here should be a gift for the nation and gift for nature. I so much wish they made electric version of this four-wheel drive. But then I'm happy I'm not in a diesel car, which are much more polluting. And with a spectacular average of 14.4 kilometers to the liter, in these high altitude conditions, this can be the greenest I can get under the circumstances. So finally, from Chennai airport to Dolat Big Oldi airfield, that plane stretch there doesn't look like an airport, but that's the airfield that was used in the 60s during the war with China. 
and it was activated once again recent times to see if it can be used for emergency landings. So that's the unit of Indian Army, the DBO uh, camps and we'll be going there. So finally we have arrived at our destination. So finally we are at DBO, Dolat Beg Uldi uh, camp of the Indian Army, bang on the border, extreme north of the country. And here our team is building passive solar heated, carbon neutral zero energy shelters for the Indian Army. You can see here these are shelters with very fat walls. Those walls are 24 inches thick and have cavities of 17 inches to be filled with insulation. Similarly, the roof will have very thick insulation so that the heat inside that comes from the sun is not lost to the minus 50 temperatures in the winters. And now towards the vast frozen plains at 18,100 feet. Driving here can be very tricky as permafrost melts in summer leaving the ground soggy and vehicles can get stuck here without any help. This is the track junction site of the army and this shelter is being built by Shazion, the enterprise arm of the Himalayan Institute of Alternative Ladakh. So this is a passive solar heated shelter being built by the army which will stay easily at plus 10 to 15 when it is minus 30, 40 outside in the winters. And uh, this place had a uh, lot of challenges, uh, permafrost, because of which we are using this floating foundation. And on the sides, because it gets very cold, we are using the rat trap bond with about 17 inches of insulation. So we are expecting the building to do very well. and provide comfort for the soldiers and the officers. Okay, I'm so honored and excited to be here at Track Junction at 18,100 feet to pay respect and salutes to our brave brothers who are defending this country. Salute you all. Thank sir. you very much. And finally, after four thrilling days of visiting the remotest border post saluting our soldiers, we started beating a pleasant retreat towards home. And on the way, we touched the serene, calm waters of Pangong Lake. While we visited Naklungpa on the north side of Pangong Lake, which is very close to the famous fingers 1 to 8, which have been very much in news in recent times. The sight of this beautiful lake, its colors, its waves and the serenity was enough to remove any tiredness from our long journey. And when it was dark, we camped by its shore under the wide open sky with the Milky Way right above our face.